Yeah, the best thing about my job is working in a team. The best thing I like about my job is working from home. I enjoy the people that I work with. The best thing I like about my job is the health benefits. Getting paid. There are a lot of great things about working, and depending on what kind of job you do, there's a sense of independence. There's their sense of pride in doing a good job. There's success in, in teamwork. Obviously, getting paid is a great thing, having benefits. All the reasons that we love our work are targets for an abuser. When we think about domestic violence, we don't think about the workplace, but we should. Domestic violence has no boundaries. It doesn't stay at home. Of course, many people think of domestic violence as something that's contained to the home. In fact, based upon my experience, I know that uh, domestic violence, first of all, uh, comes to work with the person who's a victim. So even though there may not be an actual threat at workplace, someone who is subject to a uh, victim of, a, of domestic violence who may have a restraining order uh, brings all of that with him or her to the workplace. Uh, work is a place of independence where somebody may be able to get help. It's exactly what someone who's a domestic violence batterer does not like. I worked at a local university for seven years. It was great. My manager was happy with me. I was responsible for financial reporting. And I was excited to be at work every day. Employers must create a safe and violence-free workplace for all their employees. Domestic violence affects everyone. It's not just a problem for women. One in three women and one in four men have experienced physical violence, rape, and or stalking by an intimate partner in their lifetime. I think we've come a long way over the last 30 years, uh, but still it's very difficult for the investigators because it really is a personal matter and it's really trying to be respectful for privacy issues, but at the same time making sure that we pr provide the adequate protection. Domestic violence cases can be particularly uh, uh, volatile and dangerous to victims because of the emotional involvement that's associated with these kinds of cases. So we take them with uh, a great deal of care. Uh, we have far too many. Uh, the numbers that we're seeing going back up again. We're generally arresting at least uh, one perpetrator a day, uh, and it's way too high for a community this size. And when domestic violence comes to work, um, there are a variety of ways in which uh, there is a responsibility for that. Uh, obviously, an employer has a responsibility for uh, maintaining a safe workplace. Uh, it's why we do create good networks between our local police, our first responders, and our employers to make sure that if there were an incident, something that threatened an employee, uh, a stalker came to a workplace and, and threatened an employee or others, that you'd have a good relationship to immediately call police. When I started dating Jesse, I didn't notice what was happening at first. I didn't notice him creeping into my work life. He would call me while I was at work all the time. In the beginning, he would call two or three times a day. Then it started to increase. I had to shut my phone off to get any work done. Then he would start calling my work phone. I told him, I can get fired for this. He said, I don't care started to change. At work, I would have to go to the back room to drink water to try and stop crying. Many times I couldn't even go to work because I was crying too hard or because my face was all red. And when I called in sick, nobody asked why or what was going on. This relationship completely took over. I was good at my job, but I just couldn't do it like before. I was embarrassed and lost, really lost. I tried my best, but what's happening at home can really affect the way that you work. Domestic violence, also known as intimate partner violence, is a pattern of behavior that one partner uses to have power and control over the other. In the workplace, Domestic violence most often falls into two categories, workplace disruption and on-the-job stalking and surveillance. One way that, that abusers stalk uh, their victims is to constantly send texts 
just one over after another after another, or threatening emails. And it can be done on their work computer or their personal computers. Um, same with the phone. It's something that's done incessantly. It's something done to make the victim realize and always be aware that their partner is watching them. Hiding someone's train or bus pass or the keys to their car is an effective way that an abuser can make sure that their victim is going to be late for work. I had a client who was giving a big presentation to a group of managers. She'd been working on this presentation for a long time. She started the presentation, it was going well. One wall of the conference room was all windows. During her presentation, she looked outside and saw her partner out there just sitting on a bench watching her. She immediately got nervous and apprehensive about what he was about to do. She was more nervous for her coworkers than she was herself. She just doesn't know what he's capable of. Working in a cubicle does not allow a lot of privacy. If your partner is intent on disrupting your workplace, it's very easy for them to do so because constant calling is heard by everyone, whether you're answering the phone or not. Your conversations can be heard by all of your coworkers. Um, it's an obvious interruption of work for everyone involved. And again, it's disruptive not just for that one employee, it's disruptive to the whole workplace because it does affect the dynamic at work. And so it's not a number of calls or texts, it is the quality, it's the content, and frankly, it's going to be whatever impact it has upon that victim. Uh, if it's disruptive to that, to that person in the workplace, it's going to be disruptive to everybody. Working in a team is hard enough. If one member is not doing what they said that they would, it becomes very frustrating for the whole team. And usually we go to a place of they're not having the same drive as we do or they're lazy in some way, when really it could be something completely out of their power, like their abuser making them late, their abuser purposely keeping them up at night so that they oversleep, or turning off the alarm in the morning, making them late to meetings, making them unable to concentrate um, and do their job well. We've had a couple of instances where we've actually had the perpetrator following the, uh, the victim to the workplace, uh, actually going, trying to go into the workplace um, and trying to get after the employee. Fortunately, there was a very strong uh, support within the workplace that they were able to intervene and stop the perpetrator from getting to the victim. Uh, that only happened because I think the victim had disclosed to HR there was a potential problem who then in turn alerted it to us for the safety concerns. But there have been other instances where you have repetitive phone calls and harassing types of activity taking place uh, that again interfere with the ability of the person to do their job. There may be, depending upon your circumstances, the size of your workplace, the access that outsiders may have to your workplace, uh, whether or not you are receptive to complaints uh, by employees or, or colleagues who are subject to domestic violence. Uh, there may be liability for you, but equally importantly, you want to have a workplace where your employees feel safe, where you're providing that safe and functional workplace for them. So we suggest if you do not have a domestic violence policy in place, you should talk with other employers of your kind or size uh, and try and get some assistance to get a policy in place. A little bit of prevention in this issue goes a long way to preventing uh, what could be a disaster down the road. Anytime an employee is experiencing any problem at home or outside of work, that costs the employer money. If not in direct costs of absenteeism or replacement costs, certainly in productivity. Someone who is uncomfortable, upset, can't be doing their best work. And so we are very concerned about supporting our employees and helping them make sure that they can feel comfortable at work and if necessary at home by providing them information or support. I think the most important thing that any employer can do to keep employees safe at work is to have a good policy and plan in place that you share with your supervisors and with all of your workers so that people know 
if something happens, if I learn something or something happens to me at home, I can go to my supervisor, uh, my HR department, and I will have a supportive person there who will help me through this problem. Uh, it's good for morale, it's good for the safety of the workplace. It's frankly the most important thing uh, to, to deal with uh, these issues that we know, uh, even though you may not see them on the surface all the time, we know they do exist in every single city and town uh, in Massachusetts. Uh, we know across the country and we know that every workplace has some element of domestic violence, either by people at home or coming to the workplace.